it's Wendy here again from Toon Peace Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to be doing a collaboration to get together with a lot of other crafters. I think there's 51 or 52 of us doing this and it was a January get together with people to make a clock. Now they can make any kind of clock as long as it tells the time. This is something that Hugh has put together from Wouldn't It Be Nice and I'll put the link down below so you can see what other clocks have been made. Now I originally thought oh, another clock, I've already made two, but I'm gonna make it different. I'm gonna use a cake mold and let's see how I get on. So this is the window film that I'm using. It's Fun Fox Window Film from Amazon. The link is in the description, I believe. And I'll just cut the circle and put it in the bottom of my baking tray. making sure that there's no air bubbles. This is another silicon mold that I have that is the same sort of size as the clock mechanism that's gonna go in the back of the clock. And I thought that if I could get it in the middle, it would save a lot of resin and I wouldn't have to route out the back of the clock or the mechanism. And I also need to weigh it down. So I've got some old blocks that I've made with resin and that are quite heavy that I'm using to weigh down the mold. I'm using Vista Cascade, which is a resin I use quite a lot these days. And I just pour in the first layer into the mould. Hopefully it won't go underneath the square mould in the middle. That's the plan. Making sure the bubbles go. Using my heat gun. This is 24 hours later, it's just the next layer. There is quite a few layers into this clock. And this is where I start putting in the cogs. These cogs, again, I've listed down below. Quite easy to get a hold of, they're available in Amazon. Again, bubble removal with the heat gun. So 24 hours later, I'm on to the next level and more cogs are going in. I have tried to speed everything up for you because there's a lot of layers and you don't want to be sitting through the same thing over and over. So I've cut out quite a bit and I've, I've speeded a lot of things up for you just so that you can see what is happening. This is five hours later and this is the same day and I decided to do another layer. It's quite late at night, which is why the lighting isn't very good. But I thought there's a lot of layers to this. I've got to keep going with it. So five hours later, it was enough time for it to settle and uh, put another layer in. So this is the following day, about 18 hours later in the morning, and again, yet another layer. More cogs. And this is where I start putting in some numbers. Now I only put in the three and the nine to start with. My plan was to put in quite a few layers with the numbers all in different stages, but because there wasn't enough room in the cake mold, I couldn't actually do that in the end. So I just started with the three and the nine and all the rest went in the next layer. Putting the stick across there just to make sure that they are in the right place. And five hours later, so the later on in the day, same day again, lighting not very good because it's the evening, I decide to put all the rest of the numbers in. And they all float around in the resin to start with, but I do move them into the right place. 
It takes me a little while to actually figure out where they need to be. It's quite precise actually making a clock. You do need the numbers in the right place to tell the correct time. So 18 hours later, again the next morning, I'm going to go on to the next stage, which is figuring out how much silicone to pour in the middle. I'm taking out the middle mould to leave the void in the bottom. And obviously I need something there. So I'm going to put some silicone in the bottom, which should be, in theory, the same depth as the clock mechanism. So that the clock mechanism, when the silicone's removed, will be able to sit in the back nicely. To me, it just seemed silly to have to route out the back of the clock when I could actually not have to pour it in the first place. So that's why I'm using the silicone. And you can see with my marker there, it seems to be the right depth. Okay, 15 hours later as it says, and I'm going to use the liquid chrome pen. And now I do love liquid chrome, I must admit, it is such a nice pen to use, it's so shiny. If you do it on a flat surface, it's like a mirror. Decided to do that on the inside of the void, so that when I pour some more resin in there, the liquid chrome will be on the outside of that, showing through the clock. <laughs> that's, again, that's my plan. I hope it works. You can see how shiny it is. I'm going to use a silver metallic pigment from Resin 8 to fill up the void and hopefully make it look silvery. So after a little while, I've put the design in the silver. It doesn't stay there, unfortunately. And because I got distracted, I didn't go back in time to be able to make it again. You need to be able to do that kind of design after it's been sitting for around 90 minutes. And I forgot about it. So after two hours, it had already started curing the middle. So I could only do the design around the outside. But it's, nevertheless, it turned out lovely. So four hours later, and I'm just putting some embellishments in the centre to make it look a little bit more steampunk-like. And that's the top coat. So here's some close-ups of the middle then with the cogs and the embellishments. So this is a couple of days later. I didn't get a chance to demould it the following day. But I figured it wouldn't hurt to leave it an extra day anyway. Came out of the mould really nicely. Now I've got to take the backing off and the bit in the centre out. It takes me a little bit to be able to do that, but I'll figure it out in the end. And that's the window film. 
You can see the pattern that it's left, a beautiful pattern that it leaves. Other people have then done the, the winter film on bowls and I just thought I wanted to go on it so I thought why not do it on the back of the clock. Taking out the silicon middle. Again, the silicone's got the pattern on it as well. Wish I could say I was finally over. Now I'm going to use the liquid chrome to do the inside of the void as well. So that you won't be able to see the mechanism when it's put together. January clock challenge completed. There's my my version of a clock without the wooden back, which I've done before, in a cake dish with window film at the bottom to give it a pattern at the back. I like the fact that I put the silicone in the middle so that I had a void for the mechanism. And I think that worked really well. The chrome pen, again, worked really well to make the inside shiny. There's lots of layers in this. I've never done, seen anybody on YouTube or Instagram put cogs in resin until I started doing this. All of a sudden they all appeared. <laughs> I don't know where I was, but I missed that. Anyway, this is kind of steampunky. I love it. I love the middle. Um, the numbers don't stand out brilliantly, but you can read the time. I really wanted this as a design to hang up at the window, but it's very heavy. It will hang up at the window if you had a heavy hook for it. But I've got it on my wall at the moment. But the wind, the light shining through this would give such beautiful colours. I do believe. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you again next week. Take care for now. And I'll put some stills up at the end. <laughs>